Hi there, Sasha here from The Balanced Canine. In this video today, I'm gonna to take you through how to make your own homemade kefir or kefir. Now, kefir grains have been used um, for eons. They used to be used um, when people didn't have refrigerated units to be able to preserve their milk. Um, so it's been something that's been around for a long, long time and is considered safe as well. Now, what actually are kefir grains? Now, kefir grains are made up of bacteria, the good bacteria for your gut, and also yeast as well. Now, what happens is when we pour milk into the kefir grains and we brew it for 24 hours, we actually have these kefir grains that eat the lactose out of um, the milk. So it's, it's safe for dogs and it's safe for people um, that are lactose intolerant. Um, now, sometimes it doesn't eat all the lactose out, but it will take the majority out as well. Now, what these kefir grains have, they're just loaded with all these good bacteria. And what do bacteria do is they grow. So when we leave something out on the bench or in a cupboard or something like that, between say 20 and 26 degrees, um, bacteria is going to multiply and those bacteria are going to end up in that milk, um, creating kefir. And kefir is what we put into our dog's meals or we can drink ourselves to help the microbe in the gut because 70% of the immune system is actually in the gut. So if you think of everything that is related to the immune system, so if we have a healthy immune system, obviously that's going to be very beneficial. There's also been recent studies that mental health in humans is also related um, to the immune system um, and our ability to absorb nutrients. Now, our body can't absorb nutrients um, if it's not a good um, environment for it. There's also been some recent studies in relation to bloat and reducing gases and how bloat can be related to um, bacteria on a genetic component. So also if you have a bloat dog, it kind of makes sense to make sure that your dog's gut flora is an amazing condition, okay? Now the good thing about kefir is that the gut actually likes a variation of different uh, bacterial types. Like say, for example, um, uh, yogurt, like Greek yogurt may only have lactose bacillus, whereas kefir does have that, and about six or seven different other strains. If we only have one strain in our gut, I mean, that's okay, um, but it's not doing the best job it possibly can. So our goal is actually going to be have, having a variation of different bacteria that are good bacteria for our gut. Okay, cool. So, kefir grains, where are you going to get them? So you can either get them from a friend who already makes kefir themselves and they're going to give you some grains, or you're going to buy it online in a kefir um, creation kit, um, or your health food store usually has those kits as well. Now the kefir grains almost look like cauliflower. Let me show you, there you go. It's kind of weird. They're very sticky, gooey, there you go. Now these guys will multiply um, a lot, um, especially in these warmer environments that we have here in Australia. Um, they will tend to go a little bit crazy. In the winter, in the cooler um, periods, um, they will take longer to multiply. So what we need um, to make our kefir is we need grains, whether they come from the health food store or whether they come from a friend, and we're going to need some preserving jars. Okay, so around about this size. All right, and we're going to need some milk. Now, ideally, the milk that you're going to get is going to be raw goat's milk. That's not always easy to source, so your next one that you're going to be looking at is an organic milk. Now, I use the Paul's organic milk, but um, Woolworths also has their um, own macro uh, organic milk as well. You can just use normal milk, but it's best to use these organic types. All right. So, the first thing um, that we're going to do is we're going to get our kefir grains and we're going to put one to two tablespoons into our preserving jar. Now, that's all we really need for this size um, of a jar. So I'm going to have my little tablespoon there. One, two. I make up multiple batches at a time, um, so I always um, have more than I need. Excellent. So there we have it. We have our kefir grain sitting at the bottom um, of our jar. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our milk, give it a bit of a shake, and we're going to about three-quarter fill it. 
Now, one reason we don't fill all the way up to the top is that it's going to create gases because it's bacteria and it's multiplying, right? Um, and we also don't screw the lid on either. Now, one of the things that they say in the Kiefer community, or well, they're somewhat divided, is that Kiefer doesn't like metal. So when we're doing anything to do with Kiefer, we're not using metal. So I have a wooden spoon, I have a glass container, I have a plastic spoon. Okay, now the lid is metal. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to pop it over the top of my jar. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and pop my lid onto my jar. Okay, now I can just firmly sort of put it on there, but I'm not going to screw it on. Okay, because the gases will build up in that. Okay. Now, what I have to keep it nice and cool so it doesn't ferment too fast um, because I live in Sydney and it's pretty hot, even though the air conditioning is going a lot, is I have a slate. Okay, so this is just a slate chopping board. You can use the top of your oven as well if you want. Okay, so I just pop it on there. Alright, and then I will cover it in a tea towel because it does not like sunlight. Um, a lot of people put them in their cupboards. My cupboards in my house are too hot, so it'll actually stay out on the bench covered in a tea towel so the light can't get at it. Okay. So here are some of the rules when we are doing our kefir. So don't try and heat it up to make the process go faster. You're going to leave it out for 24 hours. Keep it away from anything that's hot. So if it's next to the jug and you're boiling the jug or cooking toast in the toaster or using the oven and your kefir um, uh, jar is right next to it, you're going to need to move it away to somewhere else. We don't want it getting too hot because heat kills bacteria. Okay, so you could potentially kill off your kefir grains. Over the next 24 hours when your kefir is brewing, whether it be in your cupboard or on your bench, what I would recommend you do is take the lid off, take your paper towel off, screw your lid on, and give it a bit of a shake. And the reason that we do this is because the kefir can actually only eat the lactose out of the area that it's contacting. So we want to sort of shake it up and, and get it moving um, quite a bit. And in the good old days when they used to use um, kefir to preserve their milk, they would actually keep it in um, hide bags above um, the door. And whenever somebody came in the door, they'd hit it. And what that would do was get the kefir moving and the milk moving around the kefir. Okay, so that's the reason um, why I suggest doing that. Over the next 24 hours, when you check in on your keeper, you may that see that it looks a bit strange. Although I don't have one to show you here, um, we should be able to show you um, over the next sort of 24 hour period um, as we follow this process. So you'll see that there's um, a form of separation. Now, what happens is that you'll see um, almost a transparent area at the bottom or at the top. Um, and you might think, oh no, it's gone off. Don't worry. What's happened is that it's just fermented more quickly than you expected. Just give it a shake and continue. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? It hasn't gone off or anything like that. It's just fermented really quickly. All right, so we're 24 hours later of um, first creating our kefir batch. So what I have here um, under these tea towels, because remember from the previous video, the kefir doesn't like direct sunlight. So if I'm going to leave it out on a bench rather than put it in the cupboard, I'm going to need to put some tea towels or something over it to stop the light. So I've got the two um, jars that I created yesterday. Okay. Now I'm just going to take the paper towel off so you can get a, a better view of this. Okay, so typically this is what it's going to look like. Okay, you can see a little bit of separation here. Okay. Don't know if you can quite see that. Looks a bit chunky on the top. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna put the lid back on that for the moment. All right, I'm just gonna show you this other one. Now, I mentioned yesterday that there is a situation called over-fermentation um, that I would show you what it looked like. Now, these two have had exactly the same process, but one's over-fermented, so it's got there quicker. It's, it's um, probably just been a little bit warmer for whatever reason. And this is what it looks like. So we see we've got the kefir here and we've got the separation here. All right, now there's nothing wrong with this. It's perfectly fine, um, but that just means that 
if we were seeing this on an ongoing basis, that we'd need to try and um, slow the process down, okay? Because it's just fermented a little bit too quickly. It won't matter in any regard, okay? All right, so what we're going to do now is remembering that kefir doesn't like metal. So we've got a plastic, sorry, a uh, glass bowl, a plastic sieve, and I've got a Pyrex jug and a wooden spoon. Now, I always give them a shake, especially the ones that um, have been um, fermented a bit longer or fermented too quickly. I'm going to give it a bit of a shake. Alright, so I'm going to put my sieve in my glass bowl and I'm going to pour this into the sieve. Alright, so it sounds kind of chunky there. Alright, I'm going to do the same with my other one. One um, cautionary note is that sometimes the cheaper um, preservation jars, the lids don't always um, go on that well, so you might end up with a little over place if you're not careful. Okay, so this is two batches. Probably at home you might only be making one batch. It just depends how much you need uh, for your dogs and you personally or anybody else that you're making it for. Alrighty, so with our wooden spoon, um, we're just going to help the process along. Sometimes um, some of these kefir brews are a little bit more chunky um, than the others. So sometimes it just needs a little bit of help. So we just want to end up with our uh, kefir grains in our soup. Okay, cool. So that's what we've got here. These are all our kefir grains, okay? Now you could potentially stop the process here. Take this kefir and put it in your fridge and it's ready to drink, okay? But what we like to do is what's called a second fermentation. So we can grab some jars, okay? And we can pour this that doesn't have the kefir grains into these jars and we're gonna let it um, second ferment for another period of time. Now, different people do it for different periods of time. Um, generally, the information that you'll find is anywhere between 6 and 24 hours. You do not want to go over 48 hours for the whole process, okay? We are dealing with bacteria here, so let's just be a little bit careful. All right, the easiest way that, that I've found to do this, because it does get somewhat messy, is that I'm going to, from the bowl, pour this into the jug. And... I'm probably the most cack-headed person around, so I'm probably still going to make a mess anyway. Okay. Then we're going to pour it into our jar. Now you're probably going to see that it's going to look like it's less, and that's because it's the key frame I know that either. With the second fermentation, you're not going to need um, your paper towels um, because you're actually going to screw the lid on this time. You're not going to get so many gases um, the second time around. Okay, cool. So, and as I said in the last video about coming along and giving it a shake every now and then, you can still certainly do that this time around as well. So they will go back onto my marble slate and they'll sit here. I usually do it for about six um, hours at the moment. It's summer here in Western Sydney and we're experiencing temperatures anywhere between 32 and 38 degrees. So even though we have air conditioning on inside, it's still a warmer kind of environment. Um, so generally about six hours. What I do after six hours, I come on back, give it a good shake, um, and then I'm going to pop it into another container and put it in the fridge. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of container it is, um, you'll generally stick with um, glass. It's kind of a more, more sterile kind of environment. I use the glass containers that look like the old style um, milk bottles, but you can just use a jar like that. That's perfectly fine. I'll show you what I have. This is one of the empty ones. If you're a member, if you're 
older than myself, we're about the same age, you remember what bass look like. And this is one of my current um, kefir that I'm um, using at the moment um, for the dogs. All right. Now, let's say that you did not want to go ahead and make another batch of kefir. So um, you've got enough and you just need to put the kefir grains on hiatus. So what you would do is you would get your kefir grains, you would pop them into um, a jar and you would cover them in milk because remember kefir drinks, it eats the milk so um, it actually needs to eat to survive. So what you can do, go ahead and do that, but then you pop it in your fridge. So you're going to put the um, lid on, leave it in your fridge, it will still ferment in the fridge but it's much slower and it's going to take about two to three weeks. So for example, if you're going on holiday and you need to put um, your grains and hiatus, you can just go ahead, cover them in milk and replace that milk once a week, okay? Now, let's say I wanna make another batch. So let's pop these aside for now. I've got these jars and they're not clean, okay? Now generally, you really only need to clean these jars about once a week. It's up to you. If you feel more comfortable cleaning them every time you use them, that's cool as well. It'll actually help the fermentation process if you just leave them like this. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is uh, grab our tablespoon. And remembering um, from the previous video that we're actually going to be using, so I'm pop this in here so it doesn't leak everywhere, um, around about two tablespoons of kefir grains per container. Right. If I have more, I can certainly chuck them in there. But the more grains that you have, um, the more you need to feed them. All right, so if you have excess, you can put them on a hiatus in your fridge or your freezer. Um, you can actually consume the grains yourself or give them to your dogs. Um, or you can give them to friends so they can start their own um, live kefir batch as well. So I actually have more, but I'm actually giving some away in the next few days. If you find that maybe your kefir batches aren't progressing the way that you would like, sometimes what you can do is you can, even though it feels a little bit gross, you can go ahead and grab them and kind of squish them and because they get quite big and bulky, so you can actually kind of break them down a little bit in your, in your fingers. Okay, that'll allow them to be able to consume the lactose and everything else in the milk a lot better. All right, so our next step, we've already got our kefir grains in our jars. Now we're going to need to grab our milk, remembering that it's either going to be raw goat's milk or it's going to be organic milk, and I use the Paul's Organic Milk available from Woolworths. Okay, so I'm just going to three quarter full it. When you see these on sale, grab them and put them in your freezer, and then you'll be able to use them whenever you need them. Now we're going to need some paper towel. Right, so one piece of paper towel and then the lids. You can clean the lids if you want or just leave them. That's fine. Okay, cool. So now we've got our new batches going and if we remember, we're going to leave them for 24 hours and every now and then we're going to come along, take the paper towel off, screw the lid on, give them a bit of a shake, take the lid off and put the paper towel back on them, okay? Um, and that allows those kefir grains to be able to get um, around all the other milk contents in there because they can only consume the lactose from the kefir grain, uh, from the direct area around it. Okay, cool. So I've got these two, which are my 24 hour ones. And then I've got these two, which are my six to 24 hour ones. Realistically, it's about a six hour process for me. Now, you can continue making um, it as much as you like. What I tend to do if I've got too much is I get ice cubes. So here we go. Now this is measured out to be one tablespoon per cube, and that works out really well because that is around about the dosage level. So one teaspoon is about one tablespoon for small dogs, um, and then one to two tablespoons for medium dogs, and two to three tablespoons for large dogs. For the Great Danes, um, we work them up to about a cup per meal, so that's about, uh, sorry, half a cup per meal, so that's about a cup per day. Or if you're home during the day and they can get, you know, a cup of kefir during um, their lunch break. Um, 
For humans, um, people drink different amounts, but around about half to one cup per day, and sometimes people build up to three cups. If you're a person or you have a dog with a um, IBS or some other sort of gut issue, you may find that you need to continue increasing your um, intake until you get to the point where you're actually getting um, relief um, from your condition. Okay, so you can just make these and you can bag them and you can put them in your freezer. Get them to your friends um, or just keep them for yourself. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. I'm still feeling new to the process of Kefir. Um, I've only killed one batch so far. I'm not actually sure how I killed it. I think I actually tried to make it too warm um, because I didn't feel it was processing fast enough. So learn from my mistakes. If you kefir, if you if you don't feel that it's processing far enough, and how you realise that kefir is processing well is because it gets thickened. And sometimes you might see that separation. Sometimes people actually wait until they see that separation, what we call over fermentation, before they actually go ahead um, and you know, do the next step in the process. Um, so sometimes people try and speed up that process by heating or warming the jar. I ended up putting mine in my laundry where it's really, really hot and I think I, that's how I actually killed it. So just keep everything in here. After 24 hours, just go ahead and go to the second step. All right, you don't need to wait. If it is a bit cooler, yes, it is gonna take a little bit longer, but really after 24 hours, when you go to your step two and you do your second fermentation, I mean, you're still doing a longer process anyway with that second fermentation step, okay? Um, cool, any questions, send them through. Um, if I can't um, help you, I'll find the answer for you. All right, thanks for watching.